Hey guys, bonjour, comment ça va? And welcome to VR Essentials, where you can get your weekly dose of VR educational entertainment. Now, if you're new to the channel, very nice to meet you and a huge welcome back, of course, to all our regular subscribers. Today, very exciting because we're talking about a new game that's still in early access, which is developed by the guys at Sokus, which is called Z-Race. So let's dive into VR and check out what it's all about. So today we're going to be using the HP Reverb G2, but of course you can use any of your PC VR headsets, including the Oculus Link, the Valve, HTC, whichever you might have, Pimax, Pico Neo 2. And uh, as you can see, there are a lot of lights that are actually beaming on me. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm going to change the music because I don't want to be flagged by any copyright infringement. Um, but basically, this is what you see when you're inside of the game for the very first time. In fact, the music, I would say, is very similar to Pistol Whip uh, when you're waiting before you go inside of the game. And I would say that to me, the graphics inside of here are very much Quest kind of graphics because you can tell that there are quite a few jagged edges and so it feels more like a Quest experience than a PC VR experience at this moment in time. So it's pretty cool area here. And then basically all you have to do is bring your controller to the screen. So player versus player uh, will come later in apparently Q2 of 2021. And then at the moment, what you can do is play against it says multiplayer, but I think it's the AI of the actual game itself. So let's click on this. And then you'll be greeted with another screen here, basically where you have some cars. Now at the very beginning, you only have three cars that you can actually choose from, and then you have to unlock them. So then I unlocked another three. So you can choose, for example, you can choose Steve Nose Space Car, isn't that cool? I have to admit that this game is one of the first titles I've seen that has so many sponsors. And also what I really like about it is the fact that it does give opportunity or a gateway to potential sponsors who want to compete in this kind of eSport. And they later on want to pay money back to the developers to have their logos and their names on the actual cars themselves. So then we have another one here, which is also pretty cool. It's really nice. And then we have another one here also, the BMF car. So it's nice to see how much the community actually has provided some input into this game. It's nice to see some influencers. Hopefully we'll see the VR Essentials car someday when we're popular enough. But uh, and then here are some other cars. So this is another one, Liv. We all know who Liv are. And Harold's channel. There you go. You can see him there. And then there's another one here. This is the virtual reality gaming and also gamertag VR's car, which looks pretty, pretty awesome, I have to admit. And then we have the rendered reality, I think, car here. And then you can see all the different sponsors every time on this side. So again, there's a lot of people uh, who have perhaps you know, provided their input into this game. So they have all the different sponsors here. So that's pretty awesome. Pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. All of them there. So once you've chosen the car, so we'll go with the uh, Steve Knows car at the moment. Once you've chosen the car, basically, uh, you'll see on this panel is where you can buy stuff in order to increase the boost or the power of you know whatever is going to happen during your race now i don't know if it makes any difference at this moment in time to be honest with you uh, because i boosted my car to the max and you have to do this in order to unlock other cars here so i don't think at this moment in time it makes much of a difference but perhaps it does i just haven't really noticed it um so that's the first thing so once you maxed out it will just look like this basically with nothing else and then here's it your money here, your coins that you can win during the race. Now, when you start the different levels, it'll be the same as when you have a car for the first time. Uh, you have to unlock the various different levels and not really, you know, you won't have so many levels 
available to start off with. I think you only have one to start off with and then you go one by one by one by one. And it's very important. Basically, you have to finish third, in, uh, first to third in each race, I think, in order to unlock the next world. So once you've chosen your, basically what you can do is you can click on one of them and then you'll see a preview of the world on this screen here. So that's pretty cool. So it gives you, you know, a little bit of a, as I mentioned, a preview as to what things are going to look like. All right. So uh, once you're comfortable, all you have to do is click on go over there. All right. And then I'll explain you how to actually play because of course you have to use your controllers to play. We'll talk about the pros and the cons of the gameplay as we go along. So it tells you where you're going to be starting on the leaderboard. And by the way, when you choose the game for the very first time, uh, you can also you know, decide what language, uh, what country you want to represent. So I'm representing at the moment England <laughs> as I'm half English. OK, and then what you do is you press start. So this is how the car will actually look like when you start the game, which is here. And then basically what you have to do is you have to use your right controller to do the direction of the actual game itself. So with the right controller, you will control where you're going to go on the circuit. And then with the left controller, you might think that you don't need to use it, but actually you'll be using it to power the nitro or the nitro, the boost. And also what you can do during the gameplay is you can stop time. Um, you know, you can make time go very slow so you can catch a breath as to what you're actually going to be doing. So let's uh, let's just go ahead and press the trigger of our right hand. Ooh, and it really, really goes very, very fast. And then during the gameplay, oh, you'll see that these are the basically the coins that you get to accumulate. And it goes really fast. Now, if you have any motion sickness, this game is not for you. You need to know this. And you have to avoid all the various different things. Otherwise, you will stop. Ooh, and it's very, very fast. I, I think this game is closest as to what would get to an FPV kind of experience. And I really think that's what's really cool about it. There are some pros and cons to the game. So first of all, it takes a lot of getting used to using your hand with the controller in order to direct the direction and the gameplay of the game itself. If you're not used to it, you need to be patient because it will take you some time to get used to it. But once you get used to it, whoo, things go so fast. It's really, really incredible. And the music normally we're playing, of course, the music that you can hear now, you know, is not the same as the music in the game itself. But basically the game in the music is pretty much some house music. It's pretty cool. It really gets you going, adrenaline pumping. And oh, you have to go through all these different things. I really like the special effects, you know, when you grind on the floor, you can see all the various different, you know, all this kind of stuff going on here, which is pretty cool. And I, I understand why the graphics are, you know, the textures are very simply, very simply done, but which is basically because it's a very big course, very long, very big. And also there are quite a few cars that are racing against you, but it definitely feels more like a quest kind of experience than a PC VR experience, I have to admit. But, you know, it goes really fast. So if you have any motion sickness, you gotta be very careful, uh, you know, especially don't eat before you play this game. And then the other thing is uh, during the gameplay is that you're actually gonna be rotating. So the tunnels move really left and right. They go all over the place. Sometimes you're gonna really be looking down in your headset, which is freaking strange, but you'll get used to it. And then at other times they will get you to look up in your headset. So you're actually climbing in a direction upwards. So that can be pretty, pretty awesome. Now, once you're done in the race, uh, basically all you have to do is click on the next button. Now, I think what the developers could do is uh, every time that you click next, it tells you new attempt or go back to the main menu. So I think what would be really good is the ability to actually, you know, continue because maybe I don't want to go back to the main menu, you know, and maybe I don't want to attempt a new one. Maybe I just want to continue the race or you could have another button to say, you know, maybe 
uh, upgrade car or something. And then the menu that comes up would just be to upgrade the car without having to go necessarily back to the main menu. But you know, these are just ideas that they can implement in the longer term. This is of course a very much an early access game. So if we go back to the main menu, it will just take a few moments to spool back there. And then we're going to use another track. All right, there we go. So let's just, we could use the game attack car. And then we can go to the, this one here, which is a bit different. So you'll see the preview of the race on the right hand side there. Game of Tag, hi to you, and Steve Knows, hi to you. And I think they've used Steve Knows' voice during the gameplay. Uh, so it tells you, you know, when you knock on something, uh, you know, hey, don't scratch the car, you know, make sure you bring the car back in one piece and all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty funny. All right, so three, two, one, and then let's go. So the other thing is, uh, you can see the trails. I really do like the glow effects. I think they're pretty cool. They give some really nice effect to the actual gameplay. And uh, we'll talk about the actual remote as to, you know, you have to do very slight twitches with your wrist. And then, and then if we put the nitro with our left controller, you'll see, oh, it goes even much faster. It's really, really crazy. Uh, you just have to get used to it. Um, I think what would be really awesome with this game is that a lot of it is tunnel based. So, you know, you're very much in a tunnel and it's just change of color and also change of scenery, of course, on the outside of the actual tunnel itself. It'd be nice to have some maybe some more open air kind of kind of uh, courses as well, just to give it a bit more contrast. But sometimes it moves really fast, like corners. Uh, the difficulty gets harder and harder as you progress in the game and you know some of the tunnels really start to have very very sharp turns which makes it very very interesting i have to admit like here Woo! but you really do feel it when it goes really really fast you feel it a lot i have to admit all right there we go we get a little bit of a power boost now the only thing that you have to be uh, aware of with this game as well is that your controller is going to vibrate all the time and also in between screens when you're going from you know after you finish the race and you choose to go back to the main menu or when you're at the main menu and it's loading the screen to go into the game the actual controllers are vibrating all the time so you are going to go through batteries so fast so all in all if you're looking for something that's quite adrenaline pumping and really have that fpv drone kind of feeling where you're really going whizzing around different tunnels at lightning speed, then this is definitely worth trying, definitely for sure. Now the controller, as I mentioned before, which is very interesting, is, is very similar to the latest DJI drone, which actually provides you a controller to be able to, with your hand and your wrist, control the movement of the actual FPV drone itself. So I thought it was very interesting that this game adopts a very similar style. And then with the other controller, what you do is you press one of the buttons I mentioned during the gameplay to boost the nitro or also to stop time. You can actually slow down time if it goes too fast for you. So you can then plan your next move in, you know, avoiding specific objects whilst you're racing. So you have better chances of winning. So not a bad, you know, for an early access game, this is actually pretty promising. And I really do like the fact that they do add some elements there, which you don't really see in other games. I do feel, however, it would be great to provide perhaps those who are not really used to it, the ability to use perhaps an Xbox S controller and then place the perhaps the car more in the middle of the screen. Of course, it would give a different effect to the game. And perhaps this is not what the developers are looking to do, but these are just some suggestions for them in any case. So you might want to try it out. You can go and get it on Steam. I'll put a link in the description below so that you can go directly and check it out yourself.